Hello. Hi, I'm Zach and this is Just Wing It Woodworking. Uh, this time around I'm going to attempt to build a corner table for a kitchen that doesn't have a lot of counter space. I have some walnut left over from the last time or the last video where I made a coffee table top that was pine and I replaced it with walnut. This time around I'm going to make some legs, maybe a shelf or two, and I hope, and I'm going to use some white oak for the legs. And I'm going to laminate them together to maybe get a nice little square and see what I can do with it and basically just wing it. So. If you stick around, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it, and I'm not going to take you through the process of how I milled down the wood this time since I did it in the last video, but in upcoming videos, you, you'll probably see it again be planed down, jointed, and squared up for glue ups, but this time I already have it glued up. So we're going to skip that step this time, and we're going to go straight to the legs. Now I'm going to cut each one of these uh, down to 36 inches, uh, three of them, and I'm going to glue them all together to make three legs, so nine pieces total, and basically, yeah, I'm just going to laminate them together, put them in clamps, and work with them from there. All right, so I have the legs all glued up now. Uh, they're a little bulky, so I'm gonna square them up down to about two and a half inches, and we're gonna see what we can do with them from there. And uh, it should be all right.
Okay, now that I have the table glued together here, I have to figure out, um, well, basically what I'm going to do with it. Uh, hmm, let's see here. So, I got to turn this uh, 35 by 29 and a quarter into that. It not, don't worry about the little squares and lines in the middle of it. But I have to make that shape, which is like a, I don't know, I call it a tulip petal, but not quite sure. So I have to turn this into this. Oh boy. Well, I guess that's a start. So what I'm trying to figure out now is the point of origin where I'm actually going to start the curved cut. The reason I'm not leaving it square is where it's going to sit in the house. You kind of have to walk around and you don't want to always be catching your hip on the corner. No, that would be terrible. So I'm trying to figure out how far down each way before I start the actual curved cut. Um, legs are square for now. They might not stay square. I'm going to run them through. Um, I'm going to run them on the router table. Maybe, I, I don't know, shave them off. Uh, but yeah, so when I figure it out, I'll let you know. Yeah. Just wing it, they say. <sighs> so look what I did. Oh, I got some stuff sitting there. I got a piece of rope or something. Got some legs sitting there. Oh. We're getting there. All right, so I think I figured out what I'm going to do to get that round part in the table. I put a screw in right here with a string and just basically wrap the string around the pencil. Started over here where I think I want the contour to start and I ran it across. So I have several lines here to pick from and it looks kind of ugly, but that, that's basically it. And it, it's not perfect, but you know what? It, it made a round uh, radius, so I, I'm happy with it. Um, it's gonna get sanded down anyway, and I'm gonna run it, uh, the router around it. But that's what I come up with, and it worked out pretty well. out half decent it's gonna work it's not perfect but it'll look nice when it's all done I hope yeah it will so basically the way I did this um, I, I could have made a template and used a uh, flush trim bit which I do have but I just wanted to show that it could be done this way you can just cut it with a jigsaw sand it down and make a half decent contour here and if it's going to be something that's functional and not as much cosmetic, it, it'll be fine. Um, it's not the perfect, I mean, there's, it's, it's a curve to kind of a, like a, a sharp straightness here. Um, but I'm, I'm just showing you that you can just do it with a sander. Uh, use your jigsaw, hit it with a sander. I used a little bit of the, uh, you know, what do you call that thing? 
the uh, disc sander just to cut off the sharp edges there. But it's, it is what it is and it's still gonna turn out okay. Like I said, could have made a template, used a flush trim bit, made it absolutely perfect. But you don't have to all the time. Basically, just wing it. What I'm doing now is I am measuring one inch in, one inch over on each one of the uh, corners, the outside corners, where the legs are gonna be. Uh, the third leg that's kind of gonna be out here on the contour itself, I, I'm gonna shape it so it kind of blends in, I think. Uh, now, it's still going to be set back about an inch. Uh, the corner that's going up against the wall over here, uh, yeah, this is upside down right now. So yeah, the corner that's going up against the wall, I'm actually going to put like a, a brace or a strip of wood that uh, goes around the corner there, and it's going to rest on that, and I'm going to uh, secure it to that so that the legs are basically only on here, here, and here on the outsides. Uh, that way it doesn't tip backwards. So once we get the shelves in and everything else, when I figure out how I'm going to do that, it, it should work out fine and it's not going <laughs> to sit against the wall and just flop over. So th that's the plan so far. So as I was marking the position for the legs, I was sitting here thinking, hmm, how am I going to attach these to the table? Um, I kind of had the location marked out now where I want them. How am I going to attach them? Well, I'm not quite sure yet. There's many different ways I could do it, but now I have to ponder on that one. So, well, let me think about it. Let's see what I come up with that doesn't look too cheesy. Yeah, hmm. Well, I might have come up with a solution. Ta-da! Oh, they don't even come out. Stupid. Ta-da! All right, well, all right. Before I get comments about, oh my gosh, you're gonna use a little uh, figure eight clamps or figure eight fasteners clamps, not clamps, figure eight fasteners. What, what's going to happen is when I, when, I, when I put the shelves in, that's going to stabilize the bottom of the legs, right? So actually the legs themselves will stand on their own. Well, they, they should anyway. And so just having the top fastened to the legs, they'll be glued down to the table itself because I, uh, I don't think it, it's going to be planned to take the top off. Um, these will work just fine. Uh, just, just trust me. Just trust me. Uh, I'm going to show you it will work. So, it, and these are cheap. I mean, you you can literally get them off of Amazon for next to nothing. I don't remember how much I paid for this little baggie. There was what's the, what's the count on them? Uh, thirty of them. There was thirty of these things. So usually if you have a base like cabinetry or something and you put a top on it, you use these little eights just to hold it down. Basically when this is done, that's what it will be. So just, just hang in there, yeah, hang in there. These, these should work.
Okay, so here what I'm trying to do is I measured in one inch on this square. The reason I did that is because I'm actually going to uh, cut out a dado and I'm going to slide this shelf into the leg. And on this side, I'm going to do the same thing in this direction. But what I was trying to figure out is how far in this bottom shelf is going to go. Because basically this is going to hold a, I don't know, let's say an air fryer and the top should have a microwave on it or something like that. So with, I'm looking at the, the size of an air fryer and I think if I go from this leg over here, there, there's going to be a waste basket that's going to slide underneath like a trash can. And I have with what usually they are for a small one is 13 inches wide. They're 12 inches wide, but I like to go 13 inches. So if I measure from the edge where this leg is going to be here, um, measure over 13 inches, and I'm going to make a mark all the way up from here so I can actually get a nice... <laughs> accurate measurement to where the shelf is going to end here. Uh, this is going to be lower to the ground, so and this is upside down obviously, and there's going to be more space from this to the lid itself. And then I'm going to put a small shelf up under here. Now if you can picture it, I know it's confusing, but I'm going to put a smaller shelf up in here for, for your phone book. and. Uh, <laughs> That's going to be closer to this. So as long as we can get a wastebasket slide up under here, uh, that, that, that'll be perfect. So that's exactly what I'm trying to do now is get about 13 inches and see where it goes from there. I have the dados cut for the bottom shelf to slide in. They're one inch deep on a two and a half inch leg. That's going to work well, I hope. Now I have to figure out how I'm going to get dados in the top part for the shallower shelf that the uh, uh, trash can is going to go under and where you're going to put your phone book. Well, let's figure out the measurements for that. Hello! Alright, so what I've got going on here is the shelf above me is 24 inches. So this gap from the lid uh, down to the shelf here is, like I said, 24 inches. So I think the other shelf over here that is going to be for the uh, phone book shelf is going to be 24 inches from the bottom towards the lid. That way we could stick the trash can underneath it yeah so I think that's what we're gonna do sounds good to me so before I can cut those dados for the uh, foam book shelf I actually need to make a shelf for it so I know how wide <laughs> uh, to make the actual dado slot uh, I got some leftover walnut here uh, this walnut is not the same thickness as the other stuff I was using. So it's going to be a little different, but it's going to be all right. 
So I'm going to get this straightened. I do have one side of this uh, jointed already. It's a little bowed. Hmm. Yeah, it'll be all right. Now that I have the foam book shelf out of the clamps, you're going to watch me sand it down in real time because this is the best part. I'm kidding. I, I wouldn't do that to you. I, I doubt you uh, clicked on this video to watch how to sand in unless you really want to watch me sand it. I didn't think so. All right. There's a little bit of change of plan here. Um, I'm actually going to with these shelves, now that I have them cut down to size, I'm going to run a brace made, because I have some leftover white oak uh, that I made the legs with, and I'm gonna run a brace from this shelf here up against this bottom shelf here, and then it's going to actually, eh, there we go, uh, touch the floor up here. Uh, e either way, I don't know where to talk to you, there you go. Either way, it, I'm still going to put a, uh, a brace against the wall for the back corner uh, when we install it. But I think just for stability sake, that's what I'm going to do. And that's, uh, yeah, plans change. Just happens. Especially when you don't actually have a plan to start with.
Now that I have the base pretty much assembled, um, I'm going to sand all the joints here and try to blend them together with the different species of woods and all the joints and everything. And I uh, hope it turns out all right. I think it will. It's looking pretty good so far. Say hi, Moo. Moo. Mm, hi. Shop kitty. In and out shop kitty. Whatever he wants to. Most of the time it's always in shop kitty. He's always here helping me. Alright, now the next step is, since I have the legs and the shelves um, stained with linseed oil, I have this tabletop upside down now. I have not finished the other side yet. I'm going to do that kind of all in one go. But I'm going to turn the bottom part upside down on here, uh, make sure the spot is where it's supposed to be, and I'm going to attach it. For now, when I move it in, it's actually going to be in two pieces, but I'm going to attach it once, undo it, and then I'm going to finish the top actually while it's still attached. It, hi, that, that's fresh. Yeah. Hi. It's, it's dry enough. So... Yeah, I don't know where I was at, so just keep watching. Mm. And here it is, the corner table was all done. Um, the measurements <laughs> actually worked. It fits amazingly enough for just winging it. Um, if you like this video, uh, please like it, maybe subscribe. Like I said before in my previous video, I have more projects coming up ahead. I'm really excited about doing them. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe.